Okay, so it doesn't matter what you teach in practice. No, that's number four. Number five, Jesus did not and does not approve of denominationalism. This is a big point. I would ask somebody at this point, how do you know if a church is a denomination? A lot of people use the word denomination, but few people actually really know what it means, I found out. How do you know if a church is a denomination? I'll tell you this analogy that I use. And I, there's actually a video on 5-Minute Bible Study YouTube page, What is a Denomination, where I use this uh, little rule of thumb. When you're driving down the road, you'll see these church signs. They'll say Church of the Nazarene, you know, First United Methodist, or, or whatever. Take the sign off. You know, I mean, don't literally go vandalize the sign, but disregard the name on the sign and look inside the building, go visit them or whatever, and look at what they're teaching and what they're practicing. That'll tell you what kind of church they are. Then look at your Bible. What does the Bible teach? What does Jesus tell us to practice? What do the apostles tell us to practice? If it doesn't mirror what you're seeing in that church, then that's not the church of Christ. Uh, anything else is a denomination. Anything else is a denomination. And so we want to address this idea of denominational, denominationalism real quick. Denominationalism is is the result of what you see in all the church divisions around us. Why are there so many different churches? If they were all teaching the same thing, there would not be a thousand different churches. That does not reflect the unity that Christ told his followers to have in John chapter 17 and verse 20. He says there, I do not pray for those. He was talking about the apostles. I don't pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I've given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I repeat that in verse 21. They, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. Is Jesus and God the Father, are they different in spirit? Are they different in uh, what they believe and what they practice? No, they are one. Second Corinthians chapter 6 is another passage, which this is where Paul is addressing idolatry. And the Corinthians had been idolaters, worshiping in idols' temples, and he tells them to come out from among them. Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers, he says there. And he, and he says it um, in such a way that is a general truth. Come out from among those who practice false worship. In this context, that could apply to many circumstances. People that do not teach and practice the truth of the church in the New Testament you cannot be a part of those and expect to be on the right way to heaven that is a narrow way, that is an exclusive way. Okay, denominationalism is not what Jesus approved of. That was number five. Number six, people are added to the church through baptism in water. I asked you one of the prelim questions was, what relationship does water have to the church? Well, here you go. People are added to the church through baptism in water. You don't believe me? Well, here's several different passages that we'll read together. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13 is your most important passage here. It says, For as the body, again, another time he uses the body as an analogy for the church. For as the body is one and has many members, but all members are of that one body, being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. He says it very clearly there. Baptism in water directly puts somebody into the one body of Christ. There not only is the one church of Christ uh, alluded to, but also the fact that baptism is the way that you are put into that church. In John chapter 3 and verse 5, this one is often overlooked. This is the conversation with Nicodemus, and Jesus says, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water... And the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Entrance into the kingdom of God is directly related to being baptized in water. Ephesians 5 and verse 25 through 26 alludes to this fact when it says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify her and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. There he makes an allusion to the act of baptism and how that puts you into the Christ-Church relationship reflective of the husband-wife relationship. And then finally, Acts 2, verse 41, we see a case study here of people being added to the church through water. Verse 41, Acts chapter 2, 
Then those who gladly received his word were baptized in water. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them, it says. It just says generically, he was added to them. Who is the them that were added to? Drop down to verse 47 there. It says, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. These people were being added to a larger group of people through the act of baptism. And at the end of that, it says that these people were being saved by being added to this other group of people through the act of baptism. So entrance into the church goes straight through the act of baptism. You are saved in the act of baptism, which we're going to address in the next lesson. Some of you may not agree with that. That's study number four. We'll address that restrictively in that study. Okay, the one thing that all these scriptures have in common that I've just read is that water, baptism, and entrance into the church cannot be separated from one another. Think about that. What did you just read? Look at those passages. I'm not trying to be um, offsetting, off-putting. I'm just trying to read to you the scriptures for what they are. I use a lot of scripture and make these plain to you by really just simply restating them. That's what this whole study has been about. So in reviewing these six points, here they are again. God designed and built His church. The church is the body of Christ, and He is the head of the church. Christ's church is essential to salvation. It matters what the church teaches and practices. Jesus did not approve of denominationalism like we have today. And people are added to the church through baptism in water. That's the six points that we've learned so far. And altogether, what we've learned in this study, while as I've left a lot of things out, I've tried to hit the most foundational concepts that you, as a potential convert to Christianity, and to have your sins washed away to be saved, will need to know before you are baptized in water. The way to heaven is narrow, man. It's exclusive. And a lot of people who think they're going to be saved are not going to be saved on the day of judgment. And many people who have no intention of believing in Christ to begin with, of course, well, they certainly cannot be saved. Uh, we have to look inwardly. We have to look at the church that we are a member of, if we're a member of a church at all. I challenge you to look at that church. Take your Bible and compare the teachings of the New Testament church and practices of the New Testament church with what you're seeing. Does it compare? Does it match up with this? If it doesn't, then it's not the church of the Bible. If it's not the church of the Bible, I can't be saved in that church. That's just the fact of the matter. I mean, it is what it is. Some people might hear me say this and they might think, you're so arrogant, Aaron. You think that you're going to the only church, or, or rather, you think that your church is the only one going to be saved? I hope that the church that I go to is indeed that I'm, I'm looking through the right lens and that it truly is modeling the teaching and practice of the scripture. But I'm willing to acknowledge the fact that it may not be. And it's my life pursuit to make sure that it is. And if it's not, then I need to either try to reform that church so that it does model the church of the Bible, or I've got to at some point abandon that church for one that does model the church of the Bible. If it means to start a church that follows the teaching and practice of the scripture, that's what I've got to do. But I've got to make sure that the church that I'm a member of is indeed the church of the Bible. I may not be a part of that church, but I better become a part of that church, and I better become a part of that church quick. If you want to know more about the church, like I said, pick up a copy of How to Identify the Church through 5minutebiblestudy.com. You can reach out to me. You can comment below on this YouTube video. Say you want a copy of it. Again, the notes to this study, word for word, in a PDF file or in a Google Drive folder, which is linked on this video description. Go down below and click it and retrieve the file. The next study that we do in this series is going to be about baptism. Are you saved? I hope you've enjoyed it. Come back for more on 5-Minute Bible Study.